Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, we are going to do Jeremiah 3. I haven't been at the, at, uh, in the book of Jeremiah in a little while, but the timing seemed perfect. You guys look at whatever everybody's going on. Oh, uh, real quick, I may get a text message while I'm filming because my wife left at 9 o'clock this morning for a, a pet clinic and they have not been back yet, so I don't know what happened. They got stuck there or what happened. So, uh, we haven't covered Jeremiah, th we haven't dug through all of Jeremiah. The last time on the playlist, we stopped at Jeremiah 2 and then did a little continued there. So the context of Jeremiah 3, if we go back here, and the last two verses, in Jeremiah 2.36, he says, Why do you gad about so much to change your way? Also, you shall be ashamed of Egypt as you were ashamed of Assyria. Indeed, you will go forth with from him with your hands on your head for the Lord has rejected your trusted allies and you will not prosper by them so what's happening if we can go back since it's been a little while since we've done this it's titled Israel forsakes the Lord we go back and look at this the Lord has given them a, a good old-fashioned butt showing he's like hey look guys look at what you're doing this is nonsense look at what's what's happening here you're just wandering off in every direction possible except towards me. And I'm doing everything for you. I'm making it as easy as possible for you. What's the problem? And they're not listening. They're not paying attention. He's giving them what for. Now, at the particular time that Jeremiah was doing this, and of course, I'm not a historian. I just read what I read. They were going into exile, and they were having a horrible, horrible time of it. Excuse me. So much so... That Jeremiah, um, they named him the weeping prophet. He was weeping over Israel. He was weeping over himself. He was weeping over everything. Uh, Jeremiah had a, a rough time of it. I really want to sit down and listen to Jeremiah talk when we get to heaven because uh, I really feel like I re kind of relate to him a little bit. But he had actually found a wife, somebody he loved. God killed her. He said, nope, I, I don't want you married. I want you focused on this because if you get married, it's going to take you away from this. Jeremiah had a rough time of it. But the whole problem was the people. None of the people listened. None of them. They went every direction but to God. They chose every other person as a leader but God. They did everything opposite of what he said. Now, of course, they kept the law. They did the sacrifices and everything. But that doesn't make you righteous. What makes you righteous is looking at God and believing God, going to God, listening to God. And they didn't do that. And they wouldn't do that. So he picked Jeremiah and sent Jeremiah to tell him. They tortured him. That guy was catching, catching it from every, every angle. So we're going to continue, pick up where we left off, and we're going to continue. Um, I have not pre-read this, so I don't know what it says. We're just going to shoot from the hip on this. Um, and we're going to see what God has to say. Jeremiah, I think, has got a lot to say about right now. And I think we're going to see that the further along we go. And I'm going to try to dedicate as much time as I can uh, these next two weeks to finishing the parables of the Bible playlist, which you guys should have watched some at noon, and um, try to finish Jeremiah. So Jeremiah 3. They say, he's continuing his thought from chapter 2, they say if a man divorces his wife and she goes from him and becomes another man's, may he return to her again? Now, we, it's funny because Jesus addressed this very same uh, subject in the New Testament. Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers, yet return to me, says the Lord. He's like, all right, look, you were mine. I married you. You've run off and worshipped every other god but me. Oh, yeah, you're great in doing your sacrifices and all that, but you're not worshipping me. You're doing this because this is this you think makes you righteous. I want you to come to me. Now, even though you've done this, I forgive you. I want you to come back to me. And he's telling them, you've, you've played the harlot, but I want you because I keep my promises. Verse 2, lift up your eyes to the desolate heights and see, where have you not lain with men? The desolate heights, they used to go up on the high places and make those little uh, places to worship. That's what he's talking about. By the road, you have sat for them like an Arabian in the wilderness, and you have polluted the land with your harlotries and your wickedness. He's talking about greed, sexual immorality. I mean, anything that they could do, they did. And you go back and read whenever Jesus was there and what they were doing then, same thing. 
some cases it was worse. This was back during the time when they were heavily work, uh, offering their kids up to Moloch. And if you don't know what that is, I'm not going to explain it to you because it's horrible. Horrible, horrible. Verse 3, therefore the showers have been withheld and there has been no latter rain. You have had a harlot's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. Yeah, a harlot's forehead, hard-headed. Refuse to be ashamed. You, you won't accept your responsibility. I, I, I find the latter rain reference pretty interesting there because I was talking with somebody about that uh, a couple days ago. Verse 4, will you not from this time cry to me? My father, you are the God of my youth. Will he remain angry forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken and done evil things as you were able. Now he's going to call them back to repentance. This is very interesting because I think I know where Jeremiah 3 is going to take us. I haven't read ahead, but I think I know where it's going to take us. Jeremiah 3, 6. The Lord also said to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there played the harlot. They, they worshipped the trees. They worshipped under the trees. And I said, after she had done all these things, return to me. But she did not return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Then I saw that for all the causes of which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. God said, done. Go into exile, not dealing with y'all anymore. This is ridiculous. And Judah went too. Verse 9, so it came to pass through her casual harlotry that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. They worshipped the rocks. They worshipped the trees. So elsewhere in the scriptures, he says, you, called, you call the trees your father. Creationism, or not creationism, uh, 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 evolution. He, God's referring to evolution. Because they, they'd say, oh yeah, I came from nature, I came from this, I came from that. People don't realize, people that, that worship Wiccan don't realize Wiccan was a very old, old, old belief system. It comes from before that time. But it was called something different back then. It's called witchcraft back then. <laughs> Same thing, though. <clears throat> so he's like, look, look what you've done. Look at all this stuff. Look across the land that I gave you, the jewel of the world that I gave you. Look at this. Look what you've done to it. Look how horrible it is. Uh-oh, they just got here. I may have to pause for a minute. In fact, I'll go ahead and pause right now. I'll pick this back up when after they get in to stop making noise. Okay, let's pick up where we left off. Uh, we got some thunder outside too, so I might lose power. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay, so Jeremiah 3, 9. So it came to pass through her casual harlotry that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. That's creation, or not creation, it's about evolution. We evolved from the trees. It, it's, it talks about this in other places in the Bible. We came from the trees, or the trees are our father, that kind of nonsense. And it's funny that they think that they come up with something, made some amazing discovery. God already said they were going to do it. <clears throat> Jeremiah 3.10 And yet, for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not turned to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, says the Lord. But in pretense. It looks good, it looks all right, but it's not. Almost sound like the sky just opened up. <laughs> but, it, but, but it's not, it, it's false. They're, they're doing it with their lips, they're honoring God with their lips, but they're not doing it with their heart. Their heart is not with Him. They're not interested in those things. We, we talked about this, how they knew who Jesus was. They knew who he was. They didn't want him. And he told them parables specifically referencing them. And they knew that's who he was talking about. God is reiterating this point here, or he's the first one to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, this guy did open up. It's starting to rain out there. So Judah was watching Israel do this and didn't take the hint, didn't turn back. Verse 11, Then the Lord said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Wait, what? No, oh, my wife's getting wet. <laughs> That's a big raindrop. That's a big raindrop. 
Then the Lord said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Verse 12, Go and proclaim these words towards the north, and say, Return, backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Verse 13, Only acknowledge your iniquity. This is a very key phrase here. Remember what we talked about before? Remember how I told you guys, you know, one of the things he wants us to do as individuals in our individual relationship with him is to go to him and admit our fault, admit what we've done, agree with him on these things. Because what that does is, is it moves this, this blockade between us out of the way so that we can communicate with God. It clears the, the air, so to speak. Whenever we say, yes, there's something wrong with us, we need you. And God doesn't require that much. Look, just, just understand it and realize this. Because that gets it out of the way. And then we can communicate better. They wouldn't do it. We don't do it. He's Not only is he talking about Israel here, he's talking about everybody. Verse 13, only acknowledge your iniquity, that you have transgressed, there we go, against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree. You have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. He's clearly talking about exactly what people are doing right now, where they have witchcraft in the church house, where they deny the very Bible they read from. It's the very same thing is happening. It's not old. It's not, or I mean, sorry, it's not new. It's old. Verse 14. Now, again, not only is he talking to them, but he's talking across time to us. Return, verse 14, old backsliding children. Notice he didn't say Israel this time. See, there's little secrets in the wording that let you know that he's talking to us. Return, old backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Notice he's picking out. He's like, not all y'all are coming, but one here, one here. Jesus talked about this too. Two in the field, one taking one left. Two in the bed, one taking one left. Two working, one taking one left. See, nothing in the New Testament is new. It's already been said before. We're seeing that right here. God is like, look, guys, come back to me. Admit what you did. I can see it. Everybody else can see it. But you refuse to see it. Admit what you did so that I can get rid of all this. and We can communicate with each other. Verse 15, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's who the prophets were. That's who Jeremiah was. Shepherds is also a reference to leaders, leaders of the nation. Netanyahu, he's a shepherd. And there's a prophecy associated with that of the 12 shepherds. He's, he's the 12th. That's a, that's a whole other video. Verse 16, Then it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days, says the Lord, that they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made any more. That's an interesting statement right there. Then it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days. What days? The days when he does these things right here? Yeah. Uh, says the Lord that they will say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made anymore. So what time would he be referring to when they would say that? Because they're, they're talking about it now. A lot of people are talking about it. They want it for, they say, we know where it is. We want it for the, the third temple. So what time is he talking about here? A future time. After the tribulation. Uh, verse 17, at that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered to it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. No more shall they follow the dictates of their evil hearts. That's the millennial reign. Verse 18, In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given as an inheritance to your fathers. Verse 19, But I said, How can I put you among the children and give you a pleasant land, a beautiful heritage of the host of nations? And I said, You shall call me my father and not turn away from me. That's the millennial reign. Clearly, that's the millennial reign. Verse 20, Surely, as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, says the Lord. 
A voice was heard on the desolate heights, weeping as supplications for the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way. They have forgotten the Lord their God. How many people, you go back in the Old Testament, how many people wept for Israel because of this? Jesus wept over Israel because of this. Everyone has wept over Israel because of this. Verse 22, return you black backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Indeed, we do come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Return you backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. So if you're a backsliding Christian today, this applies to you too. I mean, in a way, we're all backslidden one way or another. When we come to him and say, Lord, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Please have mercy on me and forgive me. Done. You do it with a genuine heart. It's done. That's it. He's telling Israel to do this very thing. No matter how many steps you take away from God, it's only one step to get back. Verse 23, truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. Notice that's highlighted there. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. And who was that? Jesus. But he's like, in vain it's hoped for. See, he already knew. He was already predicting. When he comes, they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to listen to him. They're going to take him out. Verse 24, For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks with their herds, their sons and their daughters. Verse 25, We lie down in our shame, and our reproach covers us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. He's literally giving them a script. Look, this is what you should be saying. Turn back to me. I don't want to be mad at you anymore. I don't want to push you away anymore. I don't want to punish you anymore. I don't want to put you in exile anymore. I don't want to write you a certificate of divorce. I want you close to me. Why won't you do that? And the thing is, is that God went out of his way to show them. They witnessed him with their own eyes. Still, they couldn't come to believe. I mean, when he took them out of ex on the Exodus, out of exile from Egypt, into the wilderness, and still had to kill a bunch of them because they were turning back to their rest, same old things. And they saw God with their own eyes. How amazing is it that, well, it's not amazing, that we see the same thing happening now. Well, people know the truth. They've got the whole book right there. They know the truth, and what do they do? Oh, you can't trust that book. Can't believe that book. Same thing. It's the same thing. If you count yourself as a people of God, this applies to you too. Now, albeit it applies differently to Israel because there, there's a, he has a different thing going. They're special because of what, what they, they were chosen out of the world. But this also applies to us too because we're doing the same things that he's doing. This is a book for our time. These prophets we're talking about right now. So when we read stuff like this, we need to pay close attention to what he's saying because we may be able to glean, remember, gleaning the fields? We may be able to glean something good out of this that can help us in our relationship with him. But if we're not willing to listen, we're never going to see it. You've got to be able to listen. So that was Jeremiah 3. God is like, hey guys, wake up. I'm doing all this for you. I, I set aside a piece of land for you. Look at how I've blessed you. And this is how you repay me. Take a lesson from that and look at Jesus. What Jesus did for us, and this is how we repay him. He's telling us we could do better. We could be better. And the only way we're going to do that is to go to him, and he will make us better. All right, that's Jeremiah 3. I love you guys. We'll go into Jeremiah 4 next video. I'm going to try to do that tomorrow. And he continues his thought, but then... Then we have disaster from the north, and this is a prelude. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of stuff with what we got going on right now. So stick with me, and uh, we may be able to discover some really interesting things. See you in the next one.